how's it going, P-Pixel pals? This is Panic Pixel, home of my gaming geek and tech ramblings. You can call me Christine. First of all, I'd like to greet you a Kung Hei Fat Choi. It is now Chinese New Year, Year of the Rooster, which is my year. And if you know anything about the Chinese zodiac at all, you can probably guess how old I am this year. But I digress. Today we are reviewing the Gemtune F21 Fly Mouse, essentially a mini keyboard and air mouse combo within one small device. Full disclosure, this product was actually given to me by Gemini Doctor who is uh, in charge of Gemtune or something like that from what I understand. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I have never ever thought of buying an air mouse before because firstly, I've always associated air mouses and remote things like this with mini PCs and Android PCs and stuff which I've never really had a use for because I've been perfectly happy with my gaming rig. Other than that, I've also heard a lot of horror stories about the free remotes that you get from uh, mini PCs in the box and how a lot of them are shite essentially. So my assumption was that unless these remotes were high in price, then they would be of the same shite quality as well. But I've got to say that the Gemtune F31 Fly Mouse has debunked that assumption for me and I've actually really enjoyed using it with my gaming rig and also my laptop. So, quick overview of the product. To use this thing, you need two AAA batteries that go into this compartment over here at the bottom of the remote and the same compartment, you'll also find a small slot that houses the USB receiver for this thing. So that thing, you can take it out really easily, plug it into your computer, and you're ready to go. There's no need to use any kind of CD to install the software or anything. It's actually really convenient. To move the cursor around the screen with this thing, you simply just have to drag the remote in whatever direction you want to go. Obviously, you have to put it upright in the right position. To left click and right click, you have to press the OK button and the back button respectively. Don't ask me why why you have to press the back button. I'm assuming because this was made for Android TVs more so than it was for like mini PCs. Button orientations are a bit weird in some sense, but it works. That's what matters. The arrow keys on the front of this thing work the same as arrow keys on your keyboard so you can use it to scroll left and right on a browser, up and down, also to choose things and menus. Apart from those key functions, you also have controls for the volume, also you can turn off your computer and open up the menu of your browser. All these functions are listed down in the instruction manual, so if you want to take a look at more details, uh, you can click the instruction manual download link that I'll be putting in the description below. So let's get to my thoughts on this product. Now, initially, I th was skeptical about the precision that I'd get from this thing because as I've mentioned before, I assume that unless this was of the higher price range, then it would actually be pretty bad. But right off the bat, after plugging this into my gaming rig and my laptop, I was pretty impressed with what you could do both on a large screen and a small screen. Even the smallest of icons, I was able to click on it and it was not that hard to like uh, click and drag on like for example the scrolling bars on a browser and whatnot. Sometimes the tracking might get misaligned because of the sensitivity of this thing. So it's, it's kind of like when you have your mouse on low DPI settings and you kind of like overshoot off of the mouse pad. Your hand is kind of in an awkward position at times but you can simply fix that by um, clicking this mouse button over here to turn it off and then realigning your hand. Apart from that, you can also change the sensitivity of this. You have four sensitivity uh, options. Now, while testing, I use this to view YouTube videos and also to browse random articles on the internet. You obviously need to use the search bar to look for new things. So that's where the mini keyboard at the other side comes in handy. Now, it might seem a little weird to have a keyboard on the other side of a thing. Why don't you just put it on the same side, right? It's going to be much easier. You don't have to flip things over and stuff like that. My answer to that is sure. It takes a bit of effort to flip it over, but considering that without this thing, I'd have to walk from here to there to type on my keyboard and then go back to sitting down, then I'd say 
flipping it over is like really the lesser evil here as, you know, a lazy person. Additionally, I like the fact that there are arrow keys available on this side, so it makes things easier when you're trying to correct your words or sentences in case you uh, make a typo or something. Though I have to say, although I didn't find it difficult to type on this keyboard with my small fingers, I can imagine it might be a little bit difficult for people with bigger hands and bigger fingers. Also, the keyboard layout is not your typical QRT keyboard layout. So the symbol placement and the number placement is a bit strange. It might take a bit of time to get used to it. So those are just some things to take note of. They're not necessarily bad things, they're more of neutral things and like it really depends on your tastes. Apart from that, the form factor of this thing is really nice. It's really compact and it's really light so it's easy to take around with you so you can like bring it from your room to like the living room and use it on another device. You can also put it into your bag and it will fit in many of the pockets. Apart from that, I also like the fact that it holds the same feeling as an actual remote. I don't think a lot of people think about this but your brain makes associations with shapes, right? And some of the air mouse keyboard combos that I've seen online kind of look like game controllers and stuff and I don't know about you but when I hold things that feel like game controllers my body starts being active like oh yeah we're about to do some action and stuff but when I hold something like this I immediately go into couch potato mode which is like perfect for Netflix and chill and just watching videos all day so the fact that this is shaped in a remote design I really like that. So, would I pay $23 for something like this as a person who has never even thought of buying an air mouse or remote for her gaming rig and laptop? My answer is a definite yes. Given the convenience that I've experienced with this thing, I can actually watch my movies from far away. Yes, I think $23 is quite reasonable for something like this. Though, obviously it would be awesome if this were like maybe slightly cheaper and stuff. But overall, $23 sounds like a pretty good deal. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about this. Would you ever buy an air mouse for your gaming rig? Or are you one of those people who has a mini PC and are considering getting a new air mouse? Also to you mini TV, mini PC, Android TV people out there, I want to know how many of you there actually are who's had really bad experiences with their remote. So leave a comment down below about that. So anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike. Make sure to tell me why you dislike the video so I can improve on my consequent videos. That, who uses the word consequent? I hope you guys have had a wonderful 2017 so far and I wish you a healthy and prosperous year of the rooster. More videos should be coming soon. I'll see you in the next one.